and celebrate him for his birthday as well. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want you guys to turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 58. The book of Isaiah, chapter 58. Now, I want to go through a whole bunch of scriptures on today. So, uh, I'm going to ask certain people, if they don't mind reading the Bible and reading it out loud. Because I just want to point out a few different things. But we're going to start off in uh, Isaiah chapter 58 in verse 12. Amen. So if you have your Bible Bibles or if you have your um, phones and stuff like that. The Bible says here in Isaiah 58. Verse 12, it says here that, and then shall be the, uh, and then, let me start over. <laughs> and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. They shall rise up the foundations of many generations. And thou shalt be called the repairers of the breach. The restorers of paths to dwell in. Yeah. So I'm going to take my thoughts from the last section of the scripture where it says, That shall be called the repairers of the breach. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for today, God. I thank you, Lord, for everything that you're going to do and say on today, oh God. Father God, I pray, Lord, that as we go through these scriptures and as you begin to bring out some revelation, God, that Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, that you will allow these people to know that this is the time to repair the breach. Yes. Father God, we pray, Lord, that you be glorified. Yes, Lord. May the devil be horrified. Yes. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, on the same, uh, you may have heard me say it already, but today's topic I want to talk to you about is time to repair the breach. Amen. I want you guys to say that real loudly for me. It's time, it's time to repair the breach. It's time to repair the breach. And so as I was reading over this scripture just the last night, I was thinking like, okay, God, what are you saying? It's time to repair the breach. What is a breach? A breach is like a, a separation. A breach is like if I was to punch a hole in the wall, and you would call it that you would say, he breached through the wall. Uh, uh, then also I started to think that, you know, a lot of times when we have a contract, when we have a contract and you don't fulfill what you're supposed to do in that contract, that means you have breached the contract. That means that somebody didn't do what they were supposed to do. And so, as I began to think about that, I thought about, hey, we have been in a breach of contract since Adam and Eve. So, if you think about it, the reason why, uh, the reason why that God even created us, he said, let us create man in our image in our likeness so that we can have fellowship together. Mm -hmm. And so the reason why God created us was for the simple fact is that he wanted to fellowship with us. Amen. He wanted to talk to us. Yeah. He wanted to have what uh, the original scripture being uh, yeah. the original uh, uh, Greek word is called koinia. He wanted to have fellowship with us. And so that as you look throughout the Bible, you will see where you, it's proven right there, it said that before the fall, that God came to visit Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. Yes, yes. Which means that they actually walked with God. Mm -hmm. they, actually talk, they actually saw God's face, face to face. The Bible tells us right now that no man can see God and face to face and live. And live. So what, how, how awesome is it to just think, wow, Adam and Eve literally looking on the face of God. Literally seeing his face. Seeing that, wow, I'm created in the master's image. Jesus. 
So, in the Garden of Eden. So, when, when, when Adam and Eve was in the Garden of Eden, what did they have? Just a few things that I just thought about really quick. They had safety. Mm -hmm. They had security. Yes. They had food and they had fellowship. All yes. right. Yes. 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 God said, this is my binding contract with me. That you can eat of every fruit of the garden except for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Once you eat that, then you will fall. You will die. God, God didn't say so. So what they didn't understand is that they was going to die spiritually. They was going to breach yes. All right. the contract. All right. All right. All right. They were going to breach the contract. Yes. Yes. They didn't understand that they was in a covenant, that they had a, a covenant, a contract. Say, said, listen, you don't have to do nothing in this garden uh -huh. but live. But right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So God made us that we are actually a three-part being. We are a spirit man. Uh -huh. We live in a body and we possess a soul. Yeah. Right. Your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions. Right. And so the, the, when, when the enemy presented you know, Adam and Eve with the, the fruit, um, when, when he presented them with the fruit, um, because God made us uh, Let's call them free agents. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. He made us free agents, mm -hmm. which means that we have the choice to choose yes. certain things. Yeah. We're not robots. Yes. Right, yes. right. We're not. We're not like angels. If the angels, if they fall, they fall. Uh -huh. There is no redemption. Uh -huh. But if we fall, yes. right. there's redemption. Yes. Right. Amen. Right. Thank God. Amen. Take your time. And so, uh, the breach of contract. The breach of contract is a legal cause of action and a type of a civil wrong in which a binding agreement or bargain for exchange is not honored by one or more of the parties to the contract by not performing or inter, uh, interfering or interfacing with the other party's performance. So what Adam and Eve they did was, now I'm not going to be able to get through all of this today, but when they breached the contract, yeah. one of the things that happened mm -hmm. is that when they fell, mm -hmm. um, first of all, they, they damaged salvation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. Salvation actually means that when we get saved, mm -hmm. you know, we accept God in our life, yeah. that is salvation. That means that God has come on the inside of us. He has changed and transformed Amen. us and renew our hearts and mind. You know, we accept him. We're going to get a little bit into that in just a little bit later. But salvation, the word actual salvation actually means that he continues to save over and over and over and over again. Come on, make a play. So, that's what salvation is. So, a lot of times the reason why you may hear preachers say, hey, listen, uh, yes, you have grace. You have mercy. You know, thank God for grace and mercy. Thank God, thank God that we're not living back uh, in Moses and them days and with the laws and everything else. Because the earth might swallow you up. Anything may happen. But we live under grace and mercy, which means that we are continually, even right now, being saved. Continually being saved. Continually being saved. Thank you, Lord. So we're living out now in a world that is lost and dying, and people don't know or understand the importance of salvation. Mm. They're just living their life, just going about their day. They don't understand that God actually wants to save them. He wants to continue to save them. Although, you know, we may not never be perfect, but we will, we can continue to work towards Toward perfection. Yes, yes. And so salvation continues to come about because once you fall, Brother Rodney, you can ask God for repentance and God will save you all over again. So, uh, so I remember when I was in Bible college and I remember when 9-11 happened. And so when 9-11 happened, uh, one of our professors, uh, Elder Canfield, he began to talk about a vision 
that um, Lester Sumrall, Dr. Lester Sumrall had. And, and within his vision, he said that there were people that were just running along the every day, just running, running, running. And they, and one thing he saw was just a line of people that were running. But when you saw the front of the line, they were trying to stop and back up. And the reason why they kept stopping and trying to back up is because they saw they saw they was going off a cliff. And they was going off a cliff and there was the fires of hell that wow. was coming up from out of the ground. And so when they was trying to stop and was trying to back up, they couldn't stop and back up because more people was behind them, pushing them forward and pushing them into hell. Jesus. So when he gave that illustration, I mean, I'm literally seeing this, as you probably, if you have an imagination like me, you see this happening, like, yo, there's so many people just running on their day. And if they get to there, whoa, oh, I can't stop, and just go over the edge. So that, so when 9-11 happened, he had just finished telling that story in that vision. And then we turn on the TV and watch the people fall from buildings. The only thing I could think was, wow, people are falling yes. into hell. Mm. No lives to be saved. God, what must I do to be saved? Yeah. I don't know if these people are saved or not. Have anybody ever offered them salvation? Jesus, come on. But they're falling Fallen. into mm. hell. Mm. Wow. Jesus. Wow. And so we have to be those repairers of the breach to make sure that those people, if they fall, that they're not going to hell, but they're going to heaven and they have an eternal life and they have it more abundantly. Come on, Pastor. I need somebody to read for me John 10, please. I need somebody else. So. I need John chapter 10. I need someone else, maybe Minister Nancy, to read John 14 to 6. So if y'all can just get those scriptures ready. So John 10. I'm going to have um, Sister Nunu. Well, you better read that for me. That's going to be John 10 when I call for it. John 16 and verse 6. Sister, Sister Nancy, Miss Nancy. Oh, I need to turn this Did you say 14? Oh, yeah. oh, John 14 and verse 6. Yes. Let's see. Who else got their Bible ready? Deacon McCall. Can you do John 3? That's going to be verses 3 through 7. You don't have a Bible one, that's fine. You have one? Okay, here we go. Have you do John 3, 14 through 16? Daughter, do you have your Bible? Or your phone? You do? Can you read out loud for me? Romans 10, 9. That's going to be 9, 1 through 15. So as long as you guys got your chapters, I'll give you your verses before uh, I get, get to there. And kill and destroy. Yes. I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Ha! My God, yes. They have so it's full until it overflows. A thief comes only in order to skip you read for the amplified version, because I have that here. A thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. 
and come that they may have and enjoy life. God came. Yes. Again, for salvation. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't come to, because a lot of people, but a lot of, well, the demons thought they were coming to destroy the world. He said, no. He said, I came that, that, that people will learn to accept him, yes. accept him as yes. Lord and Savior. Yes. You know, one of the reasons why a lot of religions, a lot of religions believe that Jesus lived. Yes. You know what the problem is? They don't believe he's the Messiah. Oh, right. They don't believe he's the Christ. Yes, yes. Oh, he was a good guy. Yep. He was yep. a great human being. Yep. Matter of fact, they put him in the category as a great prophet. Yep. <laughs> but they don't believe that he was the Messiah. Uh -huh. he don't, they don't believe that he came to save us from sin, from the contract that was broken thousands and thousands yeah. of years ago. Come on, come on. And Jesus said, I came, and I like the version she said, uh, to have abundance, to be full until overflowing. Yes. Yes. Overflowing. A lot of times if you pour water in a glass and it begins to overflow, yes. you will call it a mess. Yes. But God calls that overflow. <laughs> My God. It says here in the message uh, version of the Bible, it says Jesus told uh, this I told this uh, simple story, but they had no idea what he was talking about. So he tried again. I'll, I'll be explicit then. I am the gate of the sheep. All those others are up to no good. Sheep, uh, sheep rustlers, as Jesus called them in the uh, Message Bible. Every one of them, but the sheep don't listen to them. I am the gate. Anyone who goes through me will be cared for. Amen. Why are we not offering people salvation, getting to know who Jesus really is, when he said right here, I will take care of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. We'll freely go in and out and we'll find pasture. A thief only there to steal and to kill and destroy. I come so they will have real and eternal life. Yes, yes. More and better life than they could ever dream. Amen, amen. Jesus right here is trying to show us that listen, I, I, I'm i here to help breach, uh, repair the breach yes. of salvation. Come on, come on. John, who has John 14 verse 6? I got it. You got to keep read that out loud for me. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. Yes, Lord. Remember, I said a lot of religions believe that Jesus, it, Jesus lived, but they don't believe he's the Messiah. Come on, come on. The Amplified Version said, Jesus said, I am the only way. To God and the real truth and the real life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Yes. Amen. So this is the reason why we have to be examples in the earth. We have to be ambassadors for Christ Amen. because we are God's examples. We are God's ambassadors right here on the earth. Because how are people going to get to salvation? How are we going to repair the breach if we out living like any other thing? Come on, come on. Y'all yeah, yeah. got to shout with me. Come on. Wife, if because she can't, I know she, she read the screen. <laughs> so somebody shout for her. Amen. Amen. Glory. Yes, Lord. Preach it. John 3. Who got John 3? You get that? Verses 3 through 7. Jesus replied, What I'm about to tell you is true. No one can see God's kingdom unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Mm -hmm. They can't go back inside their, their mother. They can't be, be born a second time. Jesus answered, what I'm about to tell you is true. No one can enter God's kingdom unless they are born with water and with 
the Holy Spirit. People give birth to people, but the Spirit gives birth to, to the Spirit. All right. <laughs> you, should, you should not be surprised when I say you must be born again. <laughs> you should be surprised when I say you must be born again. So in my Bible study, because somebody asked a question, said, you know, about the Pharisees. What about the Pharisees? The Pharisees, because Nicodemus was a Pharisee, he um, he was preaching. He knew the scriptures. He knew the word of God. But he didn't believe it in his heart. Come on, come on. He didn't believe it. He didn't live it. And so that's why Jesus said, I'm surprised I haven't got to tell you this. If you read the scriptures, you should believe. But honestly, you're an unbeliever. You're honestly an unbeliever. So we have to allow people to know and understand if we're going to be repairers of the breach, yes, yes. that they have to be born, born of again. the Spirit. Yes, yes, yes. They have to be born yes. of the Spirit. Yes. When, we, when, when we enter to this world, the Bible tells us that we were born in sin. Yes, yes. We were born in sin. It is so great to know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ at a young age. But a lot of times, people at a young age quite don't fully understand. understand. Yes, yes. And so, you know, that's why a lot of times when people are younger, that, you know, they, they restrain them from being baptized because they don't understand that they're going under as, a, as an old person and coming up as a new person. Yes. Because you're becoming a new in Christ. Reached by a lot of people. So, this is my personal belief. My personal belief is once you get baptized, you ain't got to get baptized no more. But, once you become a, or get the knowledge and understanding of what baptismal actually really means, what it represents, nothing wrong with being baptized again. Amen. Amen. It's all right. Amen. You have some denominations tell you that you're not saved unless you're baptized. You're not going to heaven unless you're baptized. That's not true. Nope. The truth of the matter is, is that should you be baptized? Absolutely. But if I'm on my dying bed and I just learned about the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, you can't get me to no pool. You mean to tell me that I can't get into heaven? No. Amen. Amen. But hey, now I know about God. Yeah. Yeah. I have another understanding of who God really is. Amen. So since I have that knowledge now. Take me to the water. <laughs> Take me to the water. To the water. To be baptized. <laughs> I don't know if I can hit anybody in John 3, 14 through 16. Did I give anybody that? Yeah, you? All right, there we go. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on the pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. We all know that scripture. Amen. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. Amen. This is what we have to preach to the people on amen, the streets. Amen. This is what you got to preach to your family. Amen. And let them know, hey, I know your life ain't totally there, but God has a plan for you yes, in amen. your life. Yes. Plans of peace and not of evil. Yes. Joy, happiness. Yes. God has great things in store for you. Amen. God is calling you, First Baptist yes. Church, to yes. be the repairers of the breach. How, how else are we going to grow this church? How else are we going to grow this ministry? Amen. Amen. We got to get out there. We got to tell people about what's happening right here so they can learn about the salvation yes. of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Let's see here. What's my Romans 10? I know she probably dis disliked it right now. Romans 10, verse 9. <clears throat> Ain't gonna read 9 through 15. 
I know she said, I said she don't dislike me. Do you want a microphone? Because y'all know that she talks real soft. Yeah. Huh? Yes. Okay. There you go. You got it. And I still got to talk a louder on the microphone, too. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. That is thou shalt God has 
not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. It's time for us to repair the breach. And humanity, and it's time for us to bridge it back together. All right, all right, all right. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We have to be the repairers of the breach. Of the breach. Yes, yes, yes. We have to offer salvation. And I'm so glad that we're getting ready to go out to this community. Me too. At the end of this month. Yes. Because we're going to tell people about the salvation of Jesus Christ. We're going to allow them to know that God, if God can be for us, who can be against us? Ain't no devil in hell going to be able to stop us, be able to block us. We have salvation. We have Jesus. Though testing and trials, turmoil may come, but at the end of the day, I have salvation. I have the Lord who is the strength of my life. Yes, it is. Right now, I'm going to ask the ladies to come forward because we're going to do communion. Because he said to do this remember. in remembrance mm -hmm. of him. Yes. 